Hey, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. Today's project is inspired by Super Mario Party. In this Mario Party entry, one of my favorite minigames is called Slaparazzi, where your goal is to fight your way to be in the best position for a camera picture. I really wanted to try and recreate the whole minigame which will allow me to practice building a full game loop and implement several systems to replicate the original experience. And for this, I've used the Unity engine. So here are the steps I needed to follow to recreate this minigame. Implement the basic gameplay actions and the AI behavior for the players. Create the camera system that determines the different scores. And polish the minigame with assets, effects, and some UI. So the first thing I did was to import Jammo, the official Mixing Jam character, into the scene. And since this is a multiplayer game, I've also added copies of the character with different colors. And even though the Jammo package includes a movement script, I still needed to adapt it to allow for a more precise movement inside the level. And in order to do that, I followed this great tutorial by my friend Chido Continicio on how to use the nav mesh component to create a character controller. This allows you to define the area in which you want to limit movement and avoid unwanted behaviors. The other reason why I use this approach is because the non-human players would also use the nav mesh component to find their way towards their objective. Then besides moving, the player should also be able to push their opponents out of the way. So I headed over to Mixamo, downloaded a punch animation and added a trigger in front of the player that activates on specific frames of that motion that allow me to use the onTrigger enter function to make players get hit, which makes them move away from the hit point. And in order for this to work automatically for non-human players, I made it so that they detected if they had another player in front of them. And in that case, they would perform the action and wait some time to be able to do it again. Now to implement the picture system, I created an empty game object in the middle of the level as a pivot for the second camera. This would also allow me to add the random photo location logic just by rotating the pivot. And for non-human players, I made it so that the destination was a point right in front of the camera, making them always try to be in front of the picture. Then, I made the camera output a rendered texture to be able to display the photo result in the UI. I still needed to determine the score of the players, so I created a system that checks the distance between the camera and the players, and also uses raycasts to see if the player is visible. And with that system, I could then add the appropriate score based on the player's performance. Of course the visuals of the minigame are a big part of the experience, and for this I've collaborated with the amazing artist Ryan Prokop, which created new and original assets to build up the minigame's level. If you have a chance, check out some of his work that I'll link in the description. Ryan did a lot of stuff here, and he even assembled the level structure in Unity to make it look the way he envisioned. Then, I started adding some UI to the project. In order to show the score text in the proper position within the photo, I used the player position relative to the picture camera view and converted it to screen space. I also added a particle system to every player hit action, which gives a much better feedback when they manage to hit an opponent. And as a final touch, I added some post-processing effects. In order to have a different depth of field effect that would only apply to the picture camera, I used the local post-processing volume, which allowed me to create a specific effect area for the camera. I also downloaded a camera model from Sketchfab and replaced the cube with it. And after a bit of adjustments, this is how it turned out.
This project is free to download and you can find a link for the project's repository in the description of this video. The only reason why Mixing Jam exists is because of everyone helping out on Patreon and I want to highlight these top tier supporters. I appreciate you taking your time to watch this video and if you want to see more stuff like this, consider subscribing and sharing this video with friends. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to stay safe.